Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Tactical Frog Sub 300T PVD V2. This watch is available from watchdives.com for US$179. You can use the discount code WR4K to get US$10 discount off any watch over US$100. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. So the watch comes in this black Pelican style case. I'll show you the interior. As you can see, both halves of the Pelican style case are fully lined with foam panels, so it does an excellent job in protecting the watch in shipping. I like this style of Pelican case, they're durable and very practical, so the correct choice for the piece. With regards to the other items, this is the plastic guarantee card, and I'm pleased to report that the Tactical Frog Sub 300T is covered by a three year international warranty, which is very unusual. I want you to consider that because usually within the low tier at 179 US dollars, one would expect to have a one year guarantee or exceptionally a two year international guarantee, but watchdives.com are providing a three year international warranty, which really is excellent. And lastly, one also gets this Tactical Frog plastic tag, as you can see with the brand emblem, and it also has the cardboard tag with the Tactical Frog brand emblem again. So nice presentation, good attention to detail. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Tactical Frog Sub 300T PVD V2. So it's the black PVD version of the V2, and I'll explain the difference between the V1 and V2 respectively. The first version of the Tactical Frog Sub 300T was the V1, and that had a tachymeter bezel. Tactical Frog quickly realized their error in using a tactical in using a tachymeter bezel scale on a dive piece, and they amended this with the V2. And as you can see, looking at the outer portion of the bezel, the rotating portion, you can see it now has the correct feet markings as per the Doxa Sub 300T, which this is an homage to. So they've corrected that with the V2, and then what they've done is they've black PVD coated the V2 to create this new model. So with regards to the specifications, we have a 43mm case diameter, we have a 44.4mm lug to lug measurement, a thickness of 12.7mm and a lug width of 20mm. The mesh bracelet is straight, it's parallel, it doesn't taper from 20mm at the lugs down to the two button push flip block clasp which is fully PVD coated as you can see. The quality of the PVD coating to the head of the piece, the bracelet and the clasp are all exceptional. Now as always I'm going to draw criticism to the clasp only having three micro adjustment holes. I would like to see Tactical Frog improve upon the clasp and increase the length of the clasp. We have four micro adjustment holes which would allow for better fine tuning of the bracelet length. Now, another criticism, and it is the main negative of the piece, is the use of a pressed metal clasp. Now, the clasp is made from stainless steel, which is black PVD coated to a high standard. However, it is wholly unacceptable at this price point, US$179, to be using a pressed metal clasp. Really, the industry standard, even for low tier pieces like this, has become a solid milled stainless steel clasp. So this is something that I would like to see Tactical Frog upgrade. And I think if it was a solid milled stainless steel clasp, with PVD plating like this, it would be very aesthetically pleasing. So really the clasp is the negative of the watch. But having said that, it does work well. Good positive click to it, good firm resistance to the two button push triggers. It's got a scallop recessed for one's index finger or thumbnail. And the secondary click of the flip block works very well. So I like the quality of the PVD black coating on the mesh bracelet and the mesh bracelet has lots of articulation so it's very flexible and very comfortable to wear the piece for long periods of time. It also fits the vintage aesthetic of this being an homage to the Doxa Sub 300T because watches of that period would be worn on mesh bracelets like this. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have a double dome sapphire crystal with blue tinted AR coating. And as you can see, the blue tinted anti-reflective coating does an outstanding job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the double dome sapphire crystal. I like the slight bevel and lip of the edge of the crystal which projects above the PVD black coated bezel which is fixed on the inner portion. As you can see, I like the way it catches the light. So the execution of the double dome sapphire crystal with blue tinted AR coating is outstanding. The symmetry of the dial is excellent, it follows the classic Doxa Sub 300T dial layout which is very aesthetically pleasing. Black frame state window, white date wheel with black Arabic numerals is clearly legible. The large black 
minute hand contrasts very well with the dial and also it's easy to differentiate between the smaller hour hand and the larger minute hand. I like the square loom pip on the sweeping second hand and it's just an absolutely gorgeous dial to look at. Nice silver applied indices and they've got the amount of information on the dial correct. The V1 had Tactical Frog in text printed on the dial and I suggested to Tactical Frog that they remove Tactical Frog from the dial and just use the Tactical Frog brand emblem at 12 o'clock and delete Tactical Frog just having divers 200 meters and automatic and now it's just got the right amount of information on the V2 because we have the brand emblem divers 200 meters and automatic no unnecessary text or specification and it's not over cluttered or too busy with Tactical Frog printed on the dial so the V2 dial is more aesthetically pleasing and it's better looking so let's test the bezel action, 120 click unidirectional bezel as one would expect, nice light resistance to it, no lateral side side play whatsoever, no back play whatsoever. So it's a light resistance all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation, but it is good, it feels like a good tight bezel action. So Tactical Frog deserve full credit for a very well executed bezel, I'll just check the alignment. Absolutely perfect. So as you can see, the outer rotating portion has a loom pip with C3 Superluminova and the inner portion with minute index ticks and also Arabic numerals is fixed as per the Doxa Sub 300T, which this is an homage to. The two loom pips, uh, sorry, the outer loom pip and the white dot align correctly at 12 o'clock. So perfect bezel action. The crown is solid 316L grade stainless steel, coin edge finished and signed with the Tactical Frog brand emblem as you can see. Black PVD coated to a very high standard, so let's test the crown action. Absolutely silky smooth. Good foam resistance to it, but it does unscrew very well. It's silky smooth, nice thread interface between the internal thread of the stainless steel crown and the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. So the NH35A has a characteristic pop which pushes the winding stem out of the movement. In the first position it's the manual wind position and one can manually wind the Seiko NH35A automatic to top it up to its maximum 40 hour power reserve. So one can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up, it's an absolute pleasure to manually wind. Pulling it out to the first click position is the quick set date complication position and if you look close at 3 o'clock you can see the quick set complication works as one would expect. Nice positive click as the NH35A clicks over to the next day. Pulling it out to the second click is the time setting position. Nice light resistance to the gearing in the NH35A. Absolute pleasure to set the time. And as you can see, the NH35A has hacking. I've now hacked the second hand and stopped it dead. So I can set the time precisely to the second. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, this is outstanding screw down crown execution. Tactical Frog deserve full credit for this because they have produced a very high quality screw down crown. The screw down crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters, as does the screw down case back, which I'll show you. So as you can see, they deserve credit because this is a very well finished solid stainless steel screw down case back. Matte bead blasted effect to the background and we've got a concentric brass satin finishing to the lathe turned finish to the centre section as you can see Tactical Frog brand emblem and the specification is embossed to a high standard. The circumference of the screw down case back is mirror polished to a flawless standard and it's absolutely beautiful to look at. Very comfortable to wear against the wrist for long periods of time. Now Tactical Frog deserve credit because they've made the correct decision by not PVD coating the case bag because it is in constant co uh, contact with the wrist and of course PVD plating does eventually wear so the case back is an area which is subject to a lot of friction against the skin of the wrist and it therefore would wear the PVD plating off had they PVD plated the case back. So they've done the right thing by leaving it um, bare stainless steel and therefore it's both comfortable and also it's not going to wear. So the rest of the case, the underside and in between the lugs is fully PVD coated to a very high standard. I'm very impressed with the quality of the black PVD coating. The case finishing underneath the PVD coating is done to a high standard. As you can see, normally the flanks would have a brass satin finish and also the tops of the lugs have concentric brass satin finishing. But it's a testament to Tactical Frog because they have finished the head of the piece very well prior to it being PVD coated because PVD coating shows up any flaws 
with the case finishing but if you look at the flanks of the case they've got a nice glossy finish no imperfections no inclusions in the pvd coating so this is very high grade pvd coating and it also is very well done on the rotating bezel as you can see no flaws to the pvd plating whatsoever in between the lugs is done very well and again, they've made the correct decision by leaving the stainless steel spring bar silver in their bare metal rather than PVD plating because they are going to wear and of course the PVD plating would wear off the spring bars and look abhorrent. So the mesh bracelet is a good tight fit in between the lugs and I like the fact it's parallel and straight 20 millimeters rather than tapering and it really balances the piece very well. So I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now I haven't sized the bracelet, I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and I'm pleased to report it fits my 8 inch wrist perfectly. Three micro adjustment holes and for reference I have got the spring bar in the micro adjustment at position 3, the longest. And it fits my wrist very well. As you'll know from my previous reviews I like to size my bracelets loose so I can fit an index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all times. This is the correct sizing method. So it will fit up to an 8 inch wrist with no problems whatsoever. Now the proportions of this piece are perfect if you have a larger wrist of 7 to 8 inches. The 44.4mm lug to lug measurement to the underside of the tonneau case gives a nice snug fit. It's got a nice curved undercut to the case as you can see. And although it does have wrist presence because it's a 43mm head of the piece, it wears surprisingly um, light and also small. It's only 141 grams on the mesh bracelet. And that is a surprise because I usually expect a stainless steel case uh, watch on a bracelet to weigh circa 150 grams. To get a 43mm tonneau case with only 141 grams of heft on a bracelet, it really is very good. The 20mm mesh bracelet balances the head of the piece very well, feels very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. And it's also deceptive. One would expect this to be in excess of 13mm due to the use of the, the double dome sapphire crystal and also the fact it's a tonneau case, but it's only 12.7 millimeters thick. So this will actually easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. So if you have a larger wrist of seven to eight inches, you'll find it to be very comfortable. The feel good factor is good. The comfort level is also good when wearing it for long periods such as eight to 12 hours per day. However, if you're a collector with a six to seven inch wrist, you may find that it wears with too much wrist presence at 43 millimeters even though it's only 12.7 millimeters tall on wrist. Very aesthetically pleasing. I like the Tiffany blue dial, and of course, Tiffany blue is a very popular color. It's also available in several other dial color options, including orange and yellow, which are other classic Doxa Sub 300T dial colors. So personally, I really like this Tiffany blue color, but the orange and yellow dial color versions are also very aesthetically pleasing, and they contrast very well with the dial and also the blue color on the bezel. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. Now, I've got high expectations of this piece because it uses C3 Superluminova, which is one of my personal favorites. And I've previously reviewed the V1 and V2 versions of the Tactical Frog Sub 300T and I was very impressed with the quality of the C3 Superluminova. So I'm expecting this to perform to a similar standard. Right, so that's then fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is 10 out of 10 performance from the C3 Superluminova. It's glowing incredibly brightly, and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. One can clearly differentiate between the larger minute hand and also the shorter hour hand, so the orientation of the dial is very good. We have an absence of indice, uh, index sorry, at 3 o'clock for the date complication, which is acceptable, but I like the fact the 12, 9 and 6 applied indices are larger and they allow for larger plots of loom because one can clearly orient, orientate the dial. Nice large uh, loom pip at 12 o'clock on the outer rotating bezel, which is glowing very brightly. So as you can see, the sweeping second hand also has a loom pip, which is a square, and I really like it. So I think this is a very well executed dial layout. I like the C3 Super Luminova. It's got a nice green tone, which fits the aesthetic of this being an homage to the Doxa Sub 300T, a vintage piece. And I really like the color of the green. It's a good match between the hands, the applied indices, and the loom pip on the bezel. So as you can see, continuing to glow brightly, and the color match between the hands, the loom pip on the bezel, and the applied indices is all very good. 
So Tactical Frog deserve full credit for not cutting any corners with regards to the specification of the loom used. And I think they've made the correct decision by using C3 Super Loom Nova rather than BGW9 Super Loom Nova, which would glow blue. Right, so let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favorite aspects of the piece. You will all be familiar with the Seiko NH35A automatic. It has 24 joules. It has 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of three hertz. Hand winding and hacking, which use for complications. 40 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable and a stated accuracy of minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range. However, I'm pleased to report that Tactical Frog are very well regulating their movements. And the NH35A used in this piece is regulated to plus eight seconds per day, which is perfectly acceptable for a Seiko NH35A. So the NH35A is a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement, and I think it is the correct choice for this Tactical Frog Sub 300T. And I like the fact it's got hand winding and hacking and 40 hours of power reserve. So it's the ideal movement for this piece. Right, so lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch will meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So 179 US dollars and you can use the discount code WR4K to get 10 US dollars discount off that. So that will be 180, 169 US dollars. So I'm going to base the price point at that discounted price, 169 US dollars with the discount. Yes, this is excellent value at that price point. Now, is it excellent quality? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say it's good quality rather than excellent. And I'll explain why. Really, the clasp is the thing that downgrades this from excellent quality to good quality because it only has three micro adjustment holes, which is a minor criticism. But the main negative is the use of a pressed metal clasp, which is wholly unacceptable. Had this had a solid milled stainless steel clasp, I would say, yes, it is excellent quality and excellent value. But I cannot say it is excellent quality with a pressed metal clasp, which is abhorrent. So really, Tactical Frog needs to upgrade that, and then it will become excellent quality and excellent value. Um, but having said that, the quality of the mesh bracelet is very good. It feels very comfortable. It doesn't pull arm hairs. Nice articulation. It flexes and articulates very well, and it's PVD coated to a very high standard. There's no silver stainless steel showing through in any of the mesh links, so it is done very well. Other than that, it is the perfect watch. There's no other negatives. When I'm evaluating a watch, I look for three main key elements. The watch should have excellent bezel action, excellent crown action, and excellent loom performance. So this has C3 Super Loom Nova, which is excellent. The bezel action is excellent, and the crown action is excellent. So it has those three key elements. So yes, it's excellent value at 179 US dollars, discounted down to 169. So really the only thing that um, needs to be improved is the clasp needs to be upgraded from a pressed metal clasp to a solid milled stainless steel clasp, and then that will upgrade the watch to excellent quality and excellent value. So I'm going to recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Tactical Frog Sub 300T PVD V2. Please feel free to post your, your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.